Welcome to Match Week 2, Prem and Proper here at SDH. A very packed show. We're going to hear from uh, a lot of the coaches after, uh, so let's just say, interesting action that happened in Match Week 2. Across the board, we'll catch up with uh, the matchups of the week and some analysis after uh, one of the events that happened because of a handshake, but that was just barely scratching the surface in all of it. We will uh, take a look back at the week that was, get you ready for the week that will be, and we'll also have Golden Isles, Rotten Isles coming up at the end of the show. Niles' review of what happened in Match Week 2. So as we look for the Premier League in the week that was, got to go back to the end of Chelsea and Spurs. Here's your highlights of a crazy one, especially the ending, courtesy of our friends at NBC Sports, the Premier League in YouTube. Whipped again with pace. It's in! Harry Kane leads the party and they will escape from the bridge with a point that is one heap of top of joy compelling drama to the very end I don't think we've heard the last of the hair pulling by Romero. I think that's going to be looked at post-match, but you can't take away from the determination and belief of this team. Fantastic ball in again, in swinging from that right-hand side. It's a brilliant ball in, plenty of space for Tottenham players to attack the ball. They've got a run, haven't they, on their Chelsea opponents? And it's Kane guiding it into that far post. It's a lovely set piece from a Tottenham perspective. And that man who's so reliable knows exactly where he needs to head that ball and make it count. What a good header at what a moment in what a game. Forced them to react in a different way. Passionate, emotional, blood boiling, sometimes angry, utterly furious and still furious. And they are still at it. The game's over, the battle isn't. Tuchel and Conte have each other in their sights in a manner which reflects the history of this game, the mood of this game, the heat of this game for generations and indeed on the day. And the red card is out. Conte is dispatched after the event. These men are livid. These men are worked up. These men feel their clubs. Conte once a Chelsea friend, now a devoted foe. This has been remarkable melodrama, remarkable. Conte finally walks away, Tuchel grey-faced until he musters a smile. So after a, a day to kind of ruminate on things and kind of examine how things have laid themselves out, uh, here's a, a bit of the, the, the uh, discussion from the day after. Robbie Earl, Kara Banks and Danny Higginbottom at uh, NBC Sports discussing the fallout of uh, the handshake heard around the world. It's one of those, come over to the monitor and have a look. And is this violent conduct? Was it excessive force? If it was, it should have been a red card and a free kick to Chelsea. And at the very least, it should have been unsporting behaviour and a yellow card, still a free kick to Chelsea, and no second corner for Spurs coming in, which would have got the equaliser. So you can understand Tuchel's frustration? I can, and Mike Dean, who was on VAR, apparently looked at that incident and said he didn't think it was a red card offence, and somehow he didn't think it was a free kick. I mean, that's just incredible that Mike Dean can be sitting there and say that. And he's failed the Anthony Taylor, the referee, but more than that, he's failed Chelsea Football Club and cost them two important points in, in a big London derby. And it's interesting, because VAR did look at the decision, yeah. now retrospective mm. action can't be taken. Speaking of the two managers, we've actually just had some news from the Football Association. This, about an hour ago, the FA charged Thomas Tuchel and Antonio Conte following yesterday's match at Stamford Bridge. It is alleged that the behaviour of both managers was, quote, improper following the end of the fixture. They were each shown red cards after the whistle, and both Tuchel and Conte have until this Thursday to respond to their respective charges. There was a lot of emotion on oh, display. Yeah. Danny, you didn't mind it, though, did you? No, I didn't. I thought it added to the intensity of the occasion. You know, it was sort of the throwback. You know, you go back a few years ago, you remember Sir Alex Ferguson and Arsene Wenger, the, 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 the together 
the together that they had at certain times on the touchline. You can see here with Tuchel and Conte. I think there's a little bit of frustration amongst both managers as well. Obviously, Tuchel, you can see here, he gets he gets the second goal. He thinks, right, OK, we're going to go on and win the game. And then, obviously, Conte, then they get the equaliser. But there is a frustration from Tuchel, I think, with the transfer window so far. Conte, obviously, being a former Chelsea manager where I had success there. And I love this bit where Tuchel, he looks down at Conte and says, look at me in the eye when I'm shaking your hand. But there are going to be repercussions. There's no doubt about it. And, and obviously, we've just seen that. So, you know, that's that's just part of the passion of the game. Probably the second biggest story on the week was Brentford and Manchester United. Brentford putting four on the board in the first half at at the GTEC Community Stadium. Brentford goes on to win 4-0 over uh, Manchester United. Here's Matthias Jensen after the match, who had a goal and an assist about a great day if you're a fan of the B. It was, uh, yeah, it was a crazy game. I think we came out flying and... Uh, yeah, almost scored on every chance we had, so everything went well. Uh, both the pressure, high pressure and the low pressure, standing in a low block, I think we made it very difficult for them to break us down, and we didn't uh, concede too many chances, as I remember. You mentioned the press in there. Was that something that Thomas wanted to sort of hammer home before the game, and was that something like a clear game plan that you wanted to sort of swarm them in? Because they couldn't get out at times. Yeah, of course, but um, I don't think it was too different this game from a lot of the other games we played. We always want to press high. Because uh, we've seen before that we, yeah, even though we don't score, we create big chances uh, from yeah, recovering the ball high up the pitch. So uh, it was definitely uh, something we tried to do today as well. Um, I don't think we expected to score, I don't know how many goals uh, from high pressure, but uh, yeah, that happens sometimes. And on a personal note for you, a goal and an assist. One of the goals came from a bit high pressure. Um, you pressed really well to get it back and it was a really clever finish as well first into the corner. Yeah. You did well to keep your call in what was a really hot evening. Talk me through the goal. Um, how, how did you sort of, did you see it coming? <coughs> talk, me, talk me through it. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think, uh, of course it was a mistake from Christian, um, but I also think that uh, the keeper put him in a difficult position. It's hard to do anything when you get the ball there uh, with a the man sprinting towards you. Um, and I couldn't really see too much of the ball, actually. I just tried to get close and put my foot out. Uh, and luckily, it just uh, was in front of me suddenly. Uh, and yeah, I, I didn't really know if I could pass anyone, but I just tried to chop it and then, uh, yeah. Then after the match, our friends at Sky caught up with Eric Ten Hag, who uh, was not satisfied one bit with everything that came out of uh, the short end of the 4-0 result. Can, can you explain at this moment why and how that's happened? Not difficult for me also, surprise, uh, and when you start the game like this, I think in 35 minutes you concede uh, four goals, it's not possible. And so the team has to take the responsibility, uh, I feel really sorry for the fans, and they did everything to support us, uh, but we let them down. So you say surprise, is it just is it disbelief really at what you've seen at the moment? Also to do with that, but it's just uh, they are good players, and then you have to take responsibility on the pitch as a team and as an individual, and that is what we didn't do. So you say it's the team, so they didn't do what you asked them to do today. No, what I asked them to do is play with belief and take responsibility for a performance, and that is what we didn't do. So are you, are you surprised at that? Like, they seem like a very fragile group of players. They, they started well last week and it quickly went wrong. Even the first four or five minutes today weren't so bad and then the minute something goes wrong, they seem to really struggle. Yeah, that, that is the truth. And we, uh, we have to see that but, and we have to work on that. And it's only when we stick together and we work hard, uh, we come, uh, come over that. Hey? But belief you have to bring on the pitch for yourself and as a team. Is, it, is that something for you as a manager, belief, that's very, very difficult to change? Uh, uh, no. You can't do it on the training pitch, is what of I mean. Course, no, don't get me wrong, the manager is responsible as well. Hey? He's, he's the main responsibility, so, and I take that. And, but, um, and I will work on that. And of course, I have to give them belief, but also they have to give them, uh, they have to, to give it by themselves. Monday night football was Liverpool and Crystal Palace ended up as a 1-1 draw, not without drama here as well. You had a, a, a red card to Darwin Nunez, and uh, 
We'll have Jurgen Klopp address that in just a little bit. Uh, Crystal Palace had a 1-0 lead at the time. You go down a man, so what happens? Luis Diaz scores 1-1, and it seemed like after that, Liverpool uh, had the better of the action for the final 30 minutes, could not get the one that could put them over the top. So it was a 1-1 draw between uh, Liverpool and Crystal Palace on Monday Night Football. Here's Jurgen Klopp after the match, courtesy of our friends at Sky. Jurgen, a point of peace. Give us your thoughts on what you saw tonight. Really good start in the game, exactly what we wanted. A lot of a lot of football, the kind of football we wanted to play. Uh, a lot of desire, we wanted to put it right. Um, all this kind of thing was all there. Um, unlucky in situations. Um, of course, the, the, the game plan for Palace was obviously uh, defending deep and then going for counter-attacks. We gave him that, yeah, in the end, two opportunities, but the first one, proper one, when we should have won the ball, obviously. Protection was actually right. We had a 2 one situation, trend and Fab there, and then I think um, Essa still gets out there, or whoever it was, and um, that should not happen. And then it's difficult in the last line with the speed of Saha. Um, yeah, so, but second half again, start a positive start, um, and then getting the red card. So I saw it now back, that's of course a red card. Even when it's provoked all the time, but that's not what he, how he should do it, how he should behave. And um, so, um, but then. Four minutes later, I think um, the equaliser and then massive game from us um, against uh, ten, with ten men, um, putting such a, an effort. The pitch stadium was there. It was honestly the, the 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 real feeling I have in the moment is, is I'm proud to be honest because um, everything went during the week against us. It was crazy. It was like a witch was in the building. Everybody told me every time as somebody else. Um, um, had problems and then um, putting such a performance, especially with the circ- in the circumstances, I'm really proud of that. Then another piece of history that we'll uh, wrap up with our coaches' comments on, and it was welcome back to the Premier League, Nottingham Forest. And Nottingham Forest got to uh, host West Ham as your early match on Sunday. Nottingham Forest at a plus 305, got the win 1-0. Here's Steve Cooper after the match discussing what it was like for Forrest to be back in the Premier League, courtesy once again of our friends at Sky. An emotional day, three points at the end of it, but so many chances at both ends. Yeah, um, in terms of the game, um, I thought we deserved to win with the way we played first half. I thought we were, we were excellent, by far the better team, really took the game to West Ham, which we should do at home, but still, if you have to do that against a really good team. Um, created some good moments, probably would have liked to create more chances from it, but um, if there's any team I thought that was going to go 1-0 up, I thought it was us. They had a couple of moments, obviously, on breakaways and against the run of play, which, with the quality they have in their team, you, you understand that that can happen. But um, but we kept going and, you know, we we uh, we got a good goal. Uh, maybe not in the, the, uh, the last bit uh, as it's gone in, but in terms of the build-up and how we got into the position that we wanted to be in, made a load of passes, got players up the pitch, and when you do that, you can you can do good things. And... Um, uh, so we were good for going one 0 up, and then second half was always going to be about about what it was. You know, it was um, you know we did have some good chances from set plays, and we did get into some decent areas. But the game was going to be more about keeping the clean sheet and defending in the mid and low block. And it's so hot, you know. I mean, it was it was such an influence on the game, the heat. I mean, I was lucky I was in the shade, but even just going out now, just guys have played 90 odd minutes or 97 minutes, and that is a real effort. So so we showed a lot of heart and soul with uh, with that as well, and. Um, couple of VAR moments which is obviously I think we're, we're, we're correct I was disappointed on a disallowed goal that the foul wasn't given in in real time it was a, an easy decision to make but okay at least VAR did, did a good job on that and then um, yeah loads of good positives and then obviously outside of the game the, you know the first game back in in here we've we've reintroduced the club now on the on the Premier League stage which is a world stage that's really important that image of the you know, the Brian Clough stand is is one that a lot of people remember from from the early years in the Premier League. So it's just great to give the fans that moment that they can go, yeah, here we are. You know, so um, so we got to build on on today. We we, we built on last week at Newcastle because you've got to build on the on the difficult days as well, which that was. And um, hey, here we are. You know, one, one two games in, experienced a lot already, and you know we've um, we've uh, you know got a lot to to look forward to now in the weekend. Leading up to Everton. Other action on the board. Your early match on Saturday. Aston Villa over Everton by the score of 2-1 at a minus 128. Wolves and Fulham a goalless draw. Southampton and Leeds a crazy 2-2 draw. Leeds had a 2-0 lead. Formation change and substitutions by Ralph Hassenhutl gave uh, two goals on the board for Southampton. So 2-2 draw 
at Southampton at a plus 257. Manchester City, no problems with Bournemouth by the score of 4-0 at a minus 1250. Brighton and Newcastle, a goalless draw as well at a plus 229. Arsenal all over Leicester by the score of 4-2. Gabriel Jesus' transition seems to be working pretty well. And uh, Arsenal gets a 4-2 win at a minus 1. 75. So the standings, you know, obviously two matches in. You've got a variety of points. Uh, Manchester City and Arsenal, both on top at six. Manchester City better on goal difference. Third place, Brentford, with uh, four points and a plus four on goal difference. Then you go Spurs, Newcastle, Leeds, Chelsea, Brighton. That gets you to ninth and Aston Villa. Villa, Forest, Bournemouth, uh, that gets you to 12th. Liverpool with two draws at two points along with Fulham. More goals scored. And uh, three to two by Liverpool over Fulham gets you to 14th. Wolves, Leicester, Palace, and Southampton get you to 18th. And the two and the three teams that have lost all three of their uh, th- two of their matches so far: Everton, West Ham, and Manchester United. Bottom of the table, six goals allowed, one goal scored in their first two matches. So, uh, looking at your uh, juice box numbers as we head into the. Uh, match week three, it is Saturday and Sunday. Your early match on Saturday morning, Tottenham and Wolves. Spurs are a minus 263. Your draws a plus 417. Wolves are a plus 755. Four matches at 10 o'clock. Palace hosting Villa at Selhurst Park. Palace is a plus 152. Your draws a plus 234. Villa is a plus 195. Interesting one at, at Everton. Everton and Forest. Forest is north of plus 300 at a plus 311. Everton a minus 105 at home. Your draw is a plus 260. Fulham hosting Brentford. Fulham at Craven Cottage, a plus 148. Your draw is a plus 244. Brentford is a plus 194. Leicester hosting Southampton. And it could be another rough day for Southampton and Ralph Hassenhutl. They're north of plus 300, almost at a plus 310. Your draw is north of plus 300. Leicester at a minus 118 at King Power. Your late game, your late match on uh, Saturday at 1230 Eastern time. Arsenal a minus 227 at the Vitality going to take on Bournemouth. Bournemouth is a plus 677. Your draws a plus 374. Sunday, three matches, two at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Leeds hosting Chelsea. Chelsea's a minus 175. Leeds a plus 474, and your draws a plus 347. West Ham hosting Brighton. Take the under. West Ham at a plus 129. Brighton a plus 221. Your draws a plus 247. Manchester City is a minus 256 at Newcastle at 11.30 Eastern. It is a four, plus 409 on the draw. Newcastle a plus 746 at a home victory. And Monday night football, you want to talk interesting, Liverpool-Manchester United. Liverpool a minus 169 at Old Trafford. When was the last time that happened? Maybe last year. Manchester United is a plus 458, and your draw is a plus 344. Now it's time to hear from... A, Contributor Nile for a match week two. Here's your gold Niles and your rotten Niles, courtesy of Nile. Hello, SDA fam. This is Nile Faruqi, and we are back with the golden Nile slash rotten Niles for the second week of the Premier League. So as always, we will be looking at the stars, the flubs, the failures, and the surprises. So let's get started with the stars, shall we? And of course, let's start with Gabriel Jesus. He had two goals and two assists and Arsenal's 4-2 win against Leicester City on Saturday. He was by far the best player for Arsenal on the night. He really showed why, in my opinion, Arsenal went out and signed him for Manchester City. If Jesus keeps performing like this, then he will be a key figure for Arsenal in their top four hopes. I mean, he's just such a talented player. He does not just produce goals for himself, but he also produces goals for others. And then, of course, Kevin De Bruyne, who had a beautiful goal and an assist and man to these 4-0 win against AFC Bournemouth. No Holland goal, no problem. He continues to show what a remarkable player he is and how crucial he is to Manchester City's success. He always steps up in the big moments, and he's always a player that you can count on. Now with the flubs. I know these two players will not want to be a part of the flubs list, but too bad. So we're going to get started with David De Gea. The Manchester United goalkeeper had an atrocious night for United and their 4-0 loss to Brentford with two mistakes. The first mistake was when a shot from Brentford to Silva in the 10th minute wriggled past the hands of De Gea to give Brentford the lead. And then the second mistake was when De Gea plays the ball to Eriksen with Brentford's Jensen behind them. Jensen is able to retrieve the ball from Eriksen and score. There is no reason why De Gea should be making that pass with pressure on Eriksen. He could have simply just made another pass. And, you know, I think this shows that, you know, David De Gea is on the decline as a goalkeeper. He 
is no longer one of the world's best goalkeepers, unfortunately. And then, of course, Darwin Nunez, Liverpool's new Uruguayan striker, had the worst Anfield debut possible. He missed two big chances to score and was also sent off in the 57th minute after a headbutt on Joachim Anderson and Liverpool's 1-1 draw against Crystal Palace at Anfield. And this is not ideal for Liverpool as he will now miss their next three games. Now, let's start with the failures. Manchester United, the hope for Manchester United fans was that the Red Devils would bounce back after a disappointing 2-1 loss against Brian at Old Trafford to start the 10 Hag era, but <laughs> they didn't. You know, it was all going to be difficult against a team like Brentford, but for Manchester United to lose 4-0 is, you know, simply unacceptable. It seemed as if only one team was up for the challenge, and that team was Brentford. As soon as Brentford scored the first goal after a goalkeeping blunder from David De Gea, Man United just seemed to drop their heads and weren't able, able to recover from that. It was as if they were just punched in the mouth. And you know, also defensively, Manchester United were terrible, as players such as Lissandro Martinez got bullied because of their height. Offensively, United were also flat. You know, Ronaldo had chances to score, but was not able to capitalize. This performance ultimately shows Eric Ten Hag the job he has gotten himself into. There's a lot of work to do, but not a lot of times United's next opponent is Liverpool. And speaking of Liverpool, Liverpool did not have the most ideal start to the season with the 2-2 draw against Fulham. There was lots of hope that the Reds could turn things around at Anfield against Crystal Palace, but it was another disappointing performance as they drew 1-1 against Crystal Palace. Liverpool would once again be the team that concedes first after a goal on the transition from Wilfred Zaha in the 32nd minute. It just, just seems to be a bad habit that they cannot seem to escape. And, you know, there, of course, would start to be frustration as Liverpool would still push to find an equalizer. And there would be a moment when Darnie Nunez would just seem to lose his head. He would receive a red card in the 57th minute after headbutting Joachim Anderson. Luis Diaz would score a world-class finish in the 61st minute for a 10-man Liverpool to bring them back in the match. However, they were not able to find a winner after that. Liverpool would have chances, but, you know, they weren't able to convert. It felt like long balls were just being panned over for the sake of it. And there were times that Liverpool were also vulnerable as Zaha could have scored a second goal to have Palace retake the lead. It's a frustrating result for Liverpool with only two points out of two games. And, you know, Liverpool looked flat offensively and concerning defensively. There's lots to work on for Liverpool as they take on Manchester United next. Now to the surprises. Let's start off with Brentford. As much as the talk will be on how badly Manchester United played, you can't, you can't take away from how well that Brentford played. They really stood up to the challenge. Brentford worked their butts off and, you know, they deserved the win against United. They were the better team in pretty much all aspects. They played some really fantastic football. And this is Brentford's first victory against Manchester United in any competition since the 2 0 win FA Cup win back in February 1938. 1938. That is remarkable. This is definitely a performance for Brentford to build off of. And then, of course, Nottingham Forest. Um, Nottingham won 1-0 against West Ham for their first home Premier League match oh, since 23 years. This is a special goal from Nottingham's Tyro Ioni as he scored for his first Premier League goal in 23 years. Dean Henderson came up big as he saved a PK that was taken by West Ham captain Declan Rice. This was a crucial moment for Forest as they picked up their first points in the Premier League this season. West Ham is a good team. But Nottingham Forest showed that they can be a tough team to play against. And with that, that is the end of the Golden Niles House Rotten Niles for the Premier League Week 2. Play it safe, everybody. So that's your rundown of Week 2. We got you ready for Week Number 3, and we'll do it again next week. For everybody here at SGH, that's your quick look around the Premier League. Play it safe, everybody. Enjoy the matches. Enjoy the early wake-up calls. It's early in the Premier League season here in 22-23. <laughs>